without a bar. Welcome to 3 PR. I'm your host, Adam R. And with me on this episode is Jean Pierre Jagnoli. Jean, how you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Good. You have a lot of credentials. So <laughs> uh, we're gonna I'm gonna start with having you introduce who you are and what it is you do, because you have a lot. Yeah, definitely. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Jean Pierre Jagnoli. Um I am an actor, rapper, comedian, impressionist, uh, DJ, host, MC. Um, parapsychologist, uh, run a nonprofit, paranormal investigator, all that stuff. So that's a quick sum up of uh, pretty much everything I do, I think. <laughs> I mean, talk about ambition. Yeah, definitely. I'm a man of many passions. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good thing, right? Keeps you young. You'll, you'll definitely, definitely. Put, you'll go through life with always having a goal. And uh, that's admired. I mean, I, I <laughs> when I was looking at your credentials, I was like, oh my God, how does he have the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's all I do once uh, about three years ago, I quit my day job just to pursue, uh, you know, mostly entertainment, but I still obviously involve the paranormal and everything else I do. But uh, acting is taking kind of the forefront. I've been doing a lot of acting work and uh, just released a paranormal rap album in October. So those are my two main ventures right now. But yeah, I pretty much do it all. And whenever one thing takes a little more focus, then I focus on that and kind of do that a little more. <laughs> Well, that's a good thing. The The Paranormal Rap Album, that's got me excited. excited. So uh, what's the name of that album? Uh, it's called Paranormal, but it's spelled differently. It's uh, P-A-R-A-K-N-O-W-R-M-U-L. And uh, yeah, it's basically kind of a amalgamation of all my years investigating the paranormal, my knowledge, but also, you know, pe what other people have told me stories about or experience all my personal experiences and personal stories. So it's kind of a mix of everything, but put into rap and hip hop. And uh, it's definitely something that I don't think any artist has undertaken before because it's a full album with 13 songs. And, uh, you know, I uh, recorded all of it, uh, you know, uh, mixed it, mastered it, and, and released it. So I did a lot of the work. Uh, I didn't produce the music on it because uh, at the time I didn't really have access to a studio. So I worked with um, Anno Domini Nation, who, like, you know, sells beat packages. And I, you know, cherry-picked uh, songs that sounded very ethereal and paranormal and spooky to kind of give that vibe to the album. Yeah, I like it. I mean, the closest before that's Michael Jackson's Thriller, man. I've never heard of this before. So I'm excited yeah, to hear it. Definitely. That's one of the big things I do in this show. Uh, I try not to learn about my guests. I want it to be like we just met, we're having coffee, and I'm excited about this. You know, I want to learn it as I go. Um, yeah, no, that's a cool way to, to go about it. <laughs> yeah, because if you do it, you have a, a, a preconception of what you're going to speak about. It sounds, you know, like labeled one through 10, and let's go through the questions. I like it. You know, we're having coffee. Keep it that way. I mean, a legit, you know, I'm having tea right now, but for, yeah, <laughs> for you, uh, the acting, let's start with acting. What's that? I mean, that's that's a tough business, period. Definitely, definitely true. Um, and I think I lucked out during the pandemic, to be honest, because uh, once everything kind of started opening up, a lot of actors left L.A. I'm in Los Angeles County over here in Southern California, so I'm in a good spot for it. Um, and I got a lot of work uh, once really the studio started filming again, everything opened up. So, I mean, that's kind of a benefit. But yeah, acting is definitely a tough business. Um, you have to kind of pivot your mentality when you get in this business and be a little humble, you know, because nobody starts out as an A-lister. You know, you go through the playing background roles, doing small stuff and side gigs. And then, you know, eventually once you build a resume and a reputation and a name, you know, you, you move forward and do bigger things. That's kind of the process of it. And depending when you start in life, it can hit or it can hit later. It can hit sooner. It all depends. It's kind of, uh, I don't know necessarily luck. I don't necessarily believe in luck, but being in the right place at the right time, being seen by the right people, and in those positions, definitely help uh, your chances in this business for sure. There's no like, there's no rule or guide really in this business. It's kind of like, you know, if, you, if you're passionate enough, you're there, you're present and, in, in, you know, on sets and in studios and auditioning for people, uh, you know, your chances, you know, obviously are, are better than if you just sit around hoping that something's going to happen. Uh, but I got my first taste of performing. I was extremely shy and introverted. Nobody believes it anymore because I'm so loud and out there now. But uh, 
you know, growing up, I was really shy and introverted. I was bullied. I was actually abused by my family. So that, and sheltered too. So that affected me a lot and how I perceived myself and how I put myself out there. Uh, so I was extremely shy. I did a lot of stuff in private. I used to like imitate Groucho Marx and Michael Jackson's dance moves when I was a kid. Nice. And like, I was really good at it, but you know, it was like a small circle of people knew I did that because I was so shy. Um, and then when I got to junior high, a counselor suggested I join choir to, to have some extracurricular stuff because I never really did that before. So it started there. I sang choir. It was in a group. So, I, you know, I was comfortable because I wasn't by myself. Uh, and whenever I was on a stage, I always just felt very comfortable. You know, outside of that, I was really shy and quiet. But once I hit a stage for some reason, it was like it was home to me. I felt comfortable. I wasn't shy. I didn't care. There was a giant audience that didn't bother me. Um, and it's more in public settings that I'm, I used to be a little more shy. Uh, and in high school, I continued with choir all the way through high school, pretty much, uh, all six years from junior high to high school. And eventually, because I loved comedy so much, I would stay up and watch Johnny Carson and Saturday Night Live and a lot of my favorite comedians. I learned a lot of impressions and comedy from them. And also, you know, stand-up comedians as well. George Carlin is one of my favorite. Um, and then I started taking drama in high school and that again, felt very comfortable being on stage performing all that kind of stuff. Um, I think a, a moment where I really had a really big realization, uh, you know, and I had like an epiphany was when I did my senior talent show. So um, I was going to sing and do a solo song, which I hadn't done in at least not outside of the choir environment. Um, and then we found out me and my best friend were performing. We were doing separate solo songs uh we found out that like none of the seniors were like performing like we had a horrible class i didn't want to do anything and because you know you know my resume and what i've said i do like they kept asking me, i jump here you want to do comedy you want to do this you want to do that i ended up doing like you know a ton of different things for my senior talent show and being as shy as i was um it was just crazy like the last week of high school i became the most popular guy in school i wasn't used to that because i was extremely shy and introverted at the time so everybody knew who i was after that and they were just like dang we didn't know you had all this talent and like man you were funny you did impressions you did music this and everybody was just like blown away by it and i think that was really the first taste of like man like there's something to this and me doing this kind of stuff because people react like it's amazing, you know, and it's it's a good feeling to be recognized for talents you believe you have and having other people acknowledge that. So, um, you know, I always wanted to do it. Unfortunately, again, a lot of abuse for about 30 something years of my life from my grandmother in particular, who was very harsh, um, wasn't very encouraging, didn't, you know, said you should get a job and get married and just do normal life things and, uh, you know, discouraged a lot and said a lot of negative things. So I didn't really pursue it. I mean, I always did kind of, but I never put my heart into it until about three years ago when I quit my day job because I just couldn't do it anymore. I wasn't happy. I was depressed. I was upset. And I said, you know what? Like I do a lot of things in life that I love, like the paranormal and stand-up comedy and still acting on the side and other and music too. But but quitting my day job and really pursuing this full time was was just an epic change. I changed my perspective on life from all the negativity. I healed from the, the abuse and the trauma. And it was like, wow, you know, I had a different perspective. So even doing background work, just being on, you know, a movie set or a TV show, um, it's where I want to be, regardless if I'm the star or not. I really don't care about fame or fortune. Uh, I really care about being happy about what I'm doing. And that has changed my life dramatically. So it's kind of a quick rundown of, of how well, I Well, yeah, I mean, acting. everything you said so far from a, a being bullied, the abuse and, you know, that's the recipe for success in most cases, right? These people have to triumph above major challenge. And, you know, when it's family that's beating you down, for me, for me personally anyway, when it's someone like family that's like put casting down on you, I think it inspires you to work harder because you're going to show them, right? Um, yeah, and yeah you know, definitely. And your energy, even your name, your name has a really commanding presence. I, I you know, when you hear your name, you, you automatically think of something of that you know, acting or something of fame anyway. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's got a, and you have energy and you're, I think partially, you know, personally, why, why you took these many, this many projects on and you, and you, you excel at acting and singing. It's an escape. It allows you to not be you and you could express the inner you and the inner you is the more yeah. powerful version of you every time your, your creativity. Yeah, is always no, more and, powerful. and even to add to that, uh, what I learned about myself healing the last year or so from everything that happened to me, uh, it's really that I, I never was able to express myself in the home and my expression became my music, my comedy, my acting. And it's actually healing when, you know, I, 
during the pandemic, around the time it started slowing down, I booked a national commercial. And I mean, sitting in the makeup chair and just saying to myself, I never thought I'd be here, but here I am sitting down in a makeup chair for a national commercial. I was like, man, I did it. I, I didn't think I could, but here I am. I pushed yeah, myself. Yeah, but I mean, look, I Brad Pitt started in Pringles commercials. Yeah. You know, so everyone's got to start somewhere. And um, with your energy and drive, I have no doubt you're going to make it bigger. Um, <laughs> and, you. I, I and I, that. you know, I really firmly believe in being positive mentally because you could, you're, I say this in a lot of shows with paranormals or even cops, when you have focus, that is a, that what, what focus is, is it's meditation at a higher level. And, when, mm -hmm. and if you focus your energy on, on the positive, I think you're going to do it. And don't be afraid to reach out, harass people. Look, I'm a firm believer in being overly aggressive, right? Yeah. You want a part in the show? Email them till it hurts. <laughs> you know? I mean, definitely. There's no harm. Yeah, in it. no, very true. Yeah. I've I've definitely pushed myself beyond my boundaries and fears that I had that it has got me to this point in my life where, you know, three years ago you wouldn't have recognized the person you're talking to right now. But now it's like it's just you see who I am now, and it's very clear. I don't even have to speak, and people can tell by the way I carry myself now what I'm about. And it's it's a beautiful thing because I always wanted to inspire people, and people use that language about me without me even telling people that that's one of the, you know my my missions in life is to inspire people to you know dream big and go further. And I hear it just by the way I live my life. I'm creating inspiration for people, and I think that's a beautiful thing to do. I agree. I listen. You have, this is a reality, even for me, everyone has a form of depression. Mine, I have it too, but yeah, you need that to channel creativity, right? It, oh, it sounds yeah. strange, yeah. but for some reason, through depression, hard times, and, and when you're really down on yourself, uh, you could create some amazing things. You could think it's of some It's completely true. Things. If you end up being constructive and not destructive in those mind states, it's amazing. Because um, I, when I was at my most severe depression, I made a comeback in stand-up comedy. And, you know, I took about a 10-year hiatus. I started doing stand-up when I was 18. Um, and in that time, I always wrote jokes anyway, you know, and I learned a lot about life, obviously, and matured and grew and moved out on my own and had other experiences. And um, during my deepest depressions, I came up with some of the best comedic gold for my routine that I ever came up with. And I mean, I would go to comedy clubs and just shut the place down. And it was like, wow, like, you know, all the bad I went through, like helped me become the person I am. So, you know, it's again, putting that positive spin on even the negative things. Yeah, and you could tell in your, in your voice. Um, it's funny too. I, I can identify with you. It's, you could project positivity on others, even through your own misery because yeah, it's it's funny to say it. I say this because I talk to a lot of people. I'm one of the I'm one of these people, man. Do as I say, not as I do. You know what I mean? I'm one of those people. But you mean well in your heart, and so by doing that, yeah, you can be very inspired. I can hear in your voice. You're you're an intelligent person, and it's common with people with high IQs to be more depressed. Like the higher the IQ, you're almost bordering insanity because it's so much to process. And when something yeah. impacts you negatively, it impacts you more because you process more. You know. But yeah, this, very I'm, true. Very and true. And then if you want to talk on the spiritual side of things too, like I'm an empath, so I feel people's energy. It affects me. I agree. So that it's like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, even when you're successful and you're happy. Like those, those, those energies around you, whether it's in the world with stuff going on or the way people are treating each other, all of that has an impact on how you feel too. And you're trying to fight all of that and still break through and bring some light and love into the world. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. You know, so I could tell by just your energy and your vibe, man, you, you're, you're a good person, period. And Thank you. I appreciate I, that. <laughs> I, I, I predict that you're going to, I think the next couple of years is going to be a breakout, man. I mean, just be aggressive though. Don't be afraid to ask, uh, you know, for me, yeah. like there's certain people I want to speak to, uh, that I knew I otherwise couldn't. And I just, I don't have no in me. I'm a weird person about that. Yeah. Yeah, though, that's what I became in the last three years of my life. In the last uh, little over a year in particular is where I really healed a lot of the trauma myself, being away from my abusive family and then coming to terms with it. And sadly, watching them pretty much all die at the beginning of the year from COVID and other complications and, you know, coming back and taking care of them at the end. And like, you know, breaking the cycle of abuse and trying to share that positivity, like really made me that way and watching them pass away with a lot of regrets made me even more you know hard-headed in achieving my goals because i'm like if i die i'm not having any regrets like they had i'm gonna make an impact i'm gonna leave a legacy not just for myself but for them too 
and something positive. So agreed. And you know what? That's sending a powerful message to the universe period. Um, yeah. I say this a lot, you know, everything, I don't know if you ever look at, I said, I've been saying a lot lately cause I've, I've read more about it, but when you look at images of the cosmic web and then you look at images of the human brain under like an MRI, you know, mm-hmm. just, and the neurons, it's very similar. It definitely has a pattern. So I kind of oh, yeah. think everything's connected. Hundred uh, percent, I, I agree. <laughs> and I said this too. I think Earth's a proving ground, and I think uh, you, you're here. You got to prove yourself, and that that depends on whether or not you go to the next level or you get recycled. Like you could be a big asshole, and then you got to get recycled, start all over again, or yeah. you could be an amazing person that did amazing things, and they recycle you back here. Um, you know, my theory is like if you look at um, fiber optic cables, how they how they transmit uh, information, it's through light. Yeah. And so the the energy of a person, which I think I think the soul and consciousness are one and the same. It's just energy concentrated. And yeah, if you re, I agree. <laughs> yeah, and if you recycle that information's still somewhat attached to that energy, and that's where you get a lot of these reincarnation cases from. You know, it's, it's oh yeah. So I mean, I, I don't agree with that. I've made room for a lot since I started doing this podcast. I did begin this whole thing with a different perspective, like you know, when a when a computer turns off your brain, it's over. But you know, I I mean, I'm evolving as I learn more. Um, yeah. And I think that's the beauty of life and you never stop learning. There's so much to know, even with all the stuff I do, like, I mean, there's stuff I don't know. There's stuff I'm not familiar with anyway, even though I, I try to be pretty well versed in a lot of different areas, you know, there's this reality of life and I never turn myself off to learning. You know what I mean? Even if like, I have something that I think, um, you know, might be a good theory or, or might be true. If I'm presented with information, I can logically change and say, no, I was wrong about that. It's actually this way. And it's, it's funny what my wife said. That's one of the qualities she likes about me is that I'm, I'm down to earth. I'm logical. I'm real about the world and the way things are. So, yeah, you have to be right. Cause uh, otherwise you get stuck in a position. And even if you know you're wrong, you become an asshole because you're like, no, 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 you can't be that way. You have exactly. to make room for things and it's great to evolve. And speak of in- inspiration. I look at your credentials and it made me say, well, Jesus, I could do more. This guy's doing it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like what, forget the idea of success or non-success. You're still doing it. There, there's, yes. you're not making excuses. 100%. You're getting out there and putting in the time and effort. I mean, it, it inspires me to do more after reading your credentials. <laughs> the, the first time I saw them and then today again, you know, before the podcast, I was like, man, yeah. cause I have other projects I want to tackle. And I'm looking at yours. I'm like, man, there's no excuses. This guy's doing it. You gotta do yeah. it. So the, the thing is, like I said, I think a key for me is I don't know why. And I think it's because of my abusive upbringing is um, I know how to balance things. And that has helped me tremendously in life. Like, you know, like I said, things take focus. So like acting's taking my time. So I'm focusing on that and putting my time and energy into that, you know, and usually I have at least two projects so I can do the music and the acting at the same time. And then like, I'm not doing really stand up right now. Uh, but I'm also have DJ gigs on the side. Like I have a DJ gig this weekend for a wedding and some coming up next year. So, you know, there's always stuff in, in the burner, but there's certain things that take focus that prioritize. And there's other things that I'm like, I work on on the side when I have free time. And then I say, you know, when the, those opportunities present themselves, I'll be ready too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, look, look, you said earlier, you started as an introvert and I find this common. Most introverts, when they break that shell, they become one of the most outgoing people you'll ever come across and, and some of the bigger achievers, you know? Uh, you know. Yeah, definitely. Cause I think in, in being an introvert, you, uh, I guess there can be negatives to it, but there are positives in the sense that I think you get to learn yourself better when you're an introvert. Cause you're not focusing outward on other people. You're focusing inward on yourself. And I think you gain a better understanding of you. So when you finally break out of that shell, you ha- you're you more confident in who you are as a person because you understand yourself rather than under your understanding yourself through the lens of other how other people view you. And I think that's, you know, can be detrimental if you don't, if you're looking at yourself through other people's lenses Agreed. and not through introspection. <laughs> and typically introverts, you know, utilize more thinking before acting where out, uh, extroverts like, you know, I'm, I'm an extrovert. Uh, I'm impulsive though. You know, that it's, it could be yeah. good, but it could be bad. Um, for you, let's, let's rewind back to high school. You got involved with the paranormal in high school, right? Started a group. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, basically I, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back even further because high school was really when it became yeah, yeah, let's something. Get, let's get to the start of it. That's what I want to hear. Go ahead. Yeah, let's, let's go to the beginning. So basically, I'm, the house I'm living in now is my grandmother's house that passed away uh, earlier this year. Um, it's where I had my first paranormal experience. I was probably about two or three in that age range. 
I stayed in the room that my grandfather had passed away in when I was only three months old. And it was a weekend. Um, and I woke up maybe two or three in the morning and his spirit was sitting in front of the bed trying to talk to me, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. Um, I freaked out, started crying, but as scared as I was, uh, he appeared to me in a form that I would recognize because obviously I didn't know him that well. Um, so he appeared in the form of a picture that was in the house of him in a wheelchair. So he was sitting in the wheelchair. When he realized I was scared, he started wheeling the wheelchair out of the room. And even though I was crying and terrified, I jumped out of the, his bed and followed him and watched him disappear through the dining room wall. After that, I ran to my grandmother's room and said, hey, look, I saw him. No, no, he was here. Da, 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 you know, and she just said, oh, you know, it's a bad dream. You can stay with you can sleep with me tonight, whatever. Um, and, you know, I told my mom, too, and nobody really believed me. So I, I shut down because I was already, you know, shut down before that in my household anyway of expressing myself. Uh, but then I want to say when I was about 10 years old, my family sat me down and said, hey, look, we didn't want to scare you. You were super little. But our family is sensitive to this stuff. We've my grandma came from Italy and experienced stuff in Italy and here in the United States when she came here. My mom had tons of experiences. And, uh, you know, that was the jumping point when I was 10 years old, like that this stuff is real. I wasn't just imagining it. I don't have to believe I'm crazy anymore. And I wanted books. I watched TV shows, the few that were out back in the 90s. Um, you know, as many books as I could get my hands on to read about ghost stories and other stuff and UFOs and anything. Um, and, you know, I was just interested. So I always watched the shows. I always read books and I was just super interested and I wanted to know more and why people like me and my family would experience this stuff. But I meet people who never experienced it and don't believe it. I'm like, you know, what, what's so different about us that we experience it and other people don't? And that's kind of my biggest quest in the paranormal is figuring out that answer. And it's hard to say. I have some theories on it, but, you know, I don't think we have any concrete uh, evidence yet as to why that occurs. I'll give you uh, some anyway, theories when you're ready. Well, get, finish the story, but when you're done, I got yeah, some yeah, theories that, that'll give you some parallels. But go ahead. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So uh, in high school, I met my best friend, Adam Catabona. He was the, he's the co-founder of the group. Um, and, you know, he was really shy and I was really shy. So we clicked right away. We just gravitated towards each other because we were both kind of quiet. And we were in choir and then we had another class together. So he was actually even more shy than I was, which I don't know how that's possible because I was extremely shy. But I broke the ice with him. And said, oh, hey, I have you in my choir class, too. And he was like, oh, yeah. And he's like, hey, you want to go play paintball? And I was like, oh, sure. I've never done it. What is it? So, I, I, you know, we got addicted to that in, like, high school and college. and played paintball a lot. Um, and then uh, eventually we started talking. I was like, you know what? I really like ghosts. And this, he's like, oh, you know what, man? That stuff's cool. I'm interested in it. And we just, yeah, that was our, like, really bonding point where, like, we had this interest in the paranormal. And one of our English teachers knew we were into that and helped us write letters to like haunted places locally to see if we can go inside and investigate and try stuff out. Um, and then 2000, we officially started the group. It wasn't a 501c3 yet, but we still started as a group. Um, and that was just me and him in high school, basically. Family, friends had connections to haunted places. We bought night vision cameras and audio equipment, you know, basic bare bones stuff to just kind of go out and see what we could experience and maybe capture. Um, and then by the time we got to college, we met more friends who were interested and we actually started a full on organization and we used to get frequent calls pretty much from clients or emails and they would ask us to come investigate their homes and other places. And um, I studied a lot of psychology and metaphysics and eventually in 2009 got my PhD in parapsychology as well, uh, which was awesome. And yeah, we just kept the ball rolling. And the day I got married, it was actually the day our 501c3 uh, application was approved. So it's kind of like, that's a twofer, you know, my wife was part, is part of the team too. So, um, you know, it's definitely a big thing. And we just continued from there. I even lectured at Chapman University for about six years in the sociology department on the paranormal. So that was exciting. Uh, another thing for my resume. So that's kind of, uh, the quick overview of how we started out the group. Um, and then you were asking about the theories. Um, some of the theories that I've come up with uh, based on psychology and studying how the you know, human behavior works and the human mind works, um, we notice that uh, you know, children are very hypersensitive to the paranormal most of the time. You know, and, and parents brush it off sometimes and say, oh, it's just your imagination or it's an imaginary friend or this and that. But lots of studies have been done that prove that not, some of this stuff is not so imaginary. So um, within that, I think uh, our minds, especially at a young age, you know, they're, they're open and um, not clouded by so much of the daily grind that uh, America in particular and capitalism has for most of us, where you're working, you have bills, you have family, you have responsibilities, and you're so 
you know, just jam packed with information that, that I think that part of the brain that allows you to be free and open to experience a deeper connection with each other, not, so not just spiritually, but with each other, even that you, you don't experience these paranormal phenomenon or some people are just extremely logical and they'll brush off paranormal phenomenon as, oh, you know, it was just my imagination or, I'm, uh, you know, that, that couldn't, that's not possible. That was so, me for a long time. Default to logic. Yeah. I had to break it down for mm-hmm. children. You know, that's a, that's a brain that's not fully developed. And there's, exactly. they have probably the ability to do way more than what other, you could teach children anything and they'll, they'll be yes. experts at it if you apply that. And exactly, you know, with the human brain, again, if you look at the, the neurons in a brain and, and how the brain's mapped out, it's definitely an instrument. It's a computer, a supercomputer, and we don't even use it to its full capacity. That being yes. said, I have, you know, my own thoughts that people are, I think everyone might be psychic. They just, they don't utilize that part of their brain. I mean, exactly. That's one of my theories as well. Yeah. And so here's a big thing with ghosts and, and spirits. So again, rewinding back to the idea that we're all pure energy. Mm-hmm. And, we, you know, our energies, and I talked to a lot of afterlife people like Roberta Grimes, and consistently I hear the same thing. Even though they have different theories and different opinions, I always hear something similar there. Yes, yes. we're an energy, right? And some people, they exhibit um, visions of their family when they're dying, and usually that maybe that's when they're going to cross over, they're going to get that guidance. But then there's those other few that they die instantly, gunshot, car accident, yes. and they're trapped in this limbo state. And they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're and or there's the few that are just they 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 put they push back they don't want to go they want to stay here yep. I'm probably going to be one of those I feel bad for the family but the point I make of that is that energy is still here right yep now think of Earth it's four billion years old who knows what civilizations or or humanoid and or non humanoid entities lived here a billion years ago we'd have no evidence of that. And they could exactly. push, they could push on all the what the atmosphere is different, the air was thicker, blah blah blah. So be it. Different entities live differently, but their energy is the same. Yeah. All the energy has a, a similar point, and that's when I say I look at that cosmic web and think of the connections of everything, regardless of how a, a civilization lived here two billion plus years ago versus today. They're formed of energy. It's the rules of the universe. So that's why. Well, some of the, the paranormal investigators, when they're talking about what well, I've came across, something that's really mysterious. It's because you don't know what it is. And of course, exactly. yeah, they make room for the fact that their energy, they're here and they're hearing us speak, act, they're watching our culture. They can learn. It's energy. They can learn just like anything else and learn to communicate back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, very true. I mean, I've encountered clients that have had paranormal teams, quote unquote, try and assist them and just call them crazy because they didn't believe what the client was saying. And, you know, my psychological background, I have like a little process I do with every client to make sure they're, they're of sound mind and, and, you know, there's nothing else going on there. And it's clear when somebody is delusional or has other issues or, you know, has been, you know, evaluated for, for some sort of psych problem. Uh, it's also clear when somebody is very, very genuine and believes what happened to them, whether there's physical evidence or not. Um, and that's how I, uh, you know, uh, go through the process of dealing with clients. I had a client once call, uh, you know, and, and she was freaking out because she said she was actually physically thrown into a dresser and had to go to emergency because of the injuries she sustained from some sort of entity. And she said another paranormal group just said, oh, you're crazy. You know, you should go see, you know, go into like a mental hospital or something rather than assessing the situation, talking to her, figuring things out. Uh, and that goes to, to, I think a lot of these people who get involved sometimes believe they know everything about this stuff. And I live by the quote that, uh, I forget who says it, but you know, a smart man believes he knows everything. A wise man knows he knows nothing. I've gotten to that point in my life where I say, you know, I have some theories on this stuff. I've experienced some things and to me it's real. And I'm not trying to prove to anybody else that it's real, but I know what I experience, and uh, I'm going to encounter things probably in my entire life that I may not understand. Um, and that's okay because that's the, to me, the beauty in life is the mystery, especially with the paranormal. So, right. Yeah. I mean, people, for those out there that say they know everything again, there are, there's, there's, and if you listen to Graham Hancock, I, I firmly believe in what he says. I don't think we're the first civilization. I think there's been a lot mm-hmm. of events that, that recycled this planet. Um, and you know, well, what, I think it's very possible. Yeah. I, I believe in those possibilities for sure. Yeah. You know, what gives me pause is when I hear exorcisms and they're they're using religion again let's just hypothetically say there's some energy here from plus a billion years ago that that predates religion 
They don't have, yeah. you're, you're speaking stuff to, and it's probably like, what the hell is this guy talking about? <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. going to do what I want. And so maybe it works for some entities because they're, they're here and they, they pass along and they understand religion and you know, the same, exactly. the same fears that we share here on earth that in the next life is off. Oh, I'm going to get punished. You know, maybe that same fear is, is shared, but Definitely. one thing I say a lot, I don't believe in bad information. Uh, I take it all in. I just believe you got to learn how to filter correctly. And you should certainly, certainly not call someone crazy without, like you said, evaluating every scenario, every possible scenario. It's, it's only fair to the client, whether they be crazy or not. And exactly. And here's another big thing too. And I say this a lot too, not to play the broken record, but when you see an entity and it interacts with you, depending on who you are, you're having a chemical reaction to what you're seeing. And, a, yes. and an overdose chemical reaction can make you literally clinically insane. You could literally yeah. lose your stability on, on reality. So it's, oh, definitely. Yeah, it's not fair to, to categorize people in a certain way without knowing the full uh, what's going on. And just because you didn't see what they're seeing doesn't mean that they're not having that experience. People exhibit different wavelengths. People interpret things differently. Yeah. There's yeah, a very factor. true. And I mean, I always humanize for most people. I get a lot of respect from a lot of skeptical people because I'm very down to earth and I'm able to, to like humanize all these things. You know, I, I really try to connect it to humanity. And a lot of people are, who are logical people who can listen and communicate are like, you know, you, you make sense the way you speak. You know, I'm not saying, oh, this stuff is real. I'm saying like, there's a possibility that this, this, and this, and this is what we think we know about this. And it's very, um, you know, again, I relate it to being human and that usually breaks the tension of the otherworldly out there crazy stuff. It's like, well, think about it. If a real person did this, wouldn't there be a similar situation? It's like, well, there would be. So that's how I kind of, you know, correlate the two. And that makes most skeptics like interested in what I do because there you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here, here's another factor too. Uh, your consciousness is a source of your intelligence, right? Um, yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's being harnessed. So again, like the brain can't be used at full capacity. Now, let's say you have an entity. It could react differently with different people. It could pick and choose. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. it's it's a form of consciousness. It's energy, but at the energy level. That's why I tell people and they're like, well, uh, one of them hurt me. Maybe it wasn't doing it intentionally because you got to understand whether it be benign or, or aggressive, it has yeah. to manipulate energy to touch you. It's not going to exactly. be pleasant. So... I'm, I, that's why every, I never walk into the room with, with, with shades on. I want to be able to see everything. Uh, yeah. It's the best way to do it. No, very true. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, eventually I'm going to get out there and do a documentary. That's, that's the end goal here. Right. Nice. And more very than likely, good. listen, if it's boring, sorry, everybody, I'm not going to add excitement where it doesn't belong, but if it's exciting, it's going to be because I go out there and I really dig, I'm going to talk to everybody. And yeah, yeah. Well, there, there's a thing to being authentic, and it's sad that that, in particular, the entertainment industry and someone like me who's in the paranormal and the entertainment industry, I've crossed this path so many times. I've turned down at least five major deals for reality shows because they wanted to turn us into characters, right. and I have too much passion for what I do to to try to get 15 minutes of fame out of you know running around like a like a jerk and doing stuff. It's just not my in my you know, wheelhouse of what I want to do. Right. Uh, And and it's sad that, you know, when you have meetings with these big companies, they're like, you know, reality TV is not real, right? We're going to tell you what to do, how to do it. We won't script anything. Okay, we might script some stuff, you know, and you get these kind of like, and it was such a letdown that that first meeting we had with a major company and was just like, look, like, we're interesting people. Like me alone, all the stuff I do would make an interesting character on the show. Yeah, in a heartbeat. Um, and then, you know, the people that were in it before, like, yeah, there's, there's quieter, calmer people on my team and there's crazier people on my team. And that's, you're going to get that real authentic vibe from what we do rather than, oh, let's make it exciting for the sake of it being exciting. And I'm really happy that a lot of the deals didn't turn out. I I turned deals down. There's deals that just fell through, uh, because it just wasn't me, you know? And like, I think one of the biggest problems is we, in life, most of the time, People don't stick by their guns or their laurels. They, they're they like, man, I could get something out of this. So maybe I should do it, even though like I don't feel it. And me, I've always been like, nah, I stick to my guns. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I've come close. I've thought about it. I've been like, should I do this? And at the end of the day, I'm like, nah, you know what? This isn't for me. It's yeah. just not. And it, it, I'd rather be true to myself and live a life that makes me happy than 
than try to pretend to be something so everybody likes me. The way I say it is when I die, I'd rather have a few people respect me than everybody love me. So <laughs> truth, you know, I mean, look for me, documentary wise, where I'm out there, uh, I promise it'll be exciting if something's there because look, I'm the guy that dies in every movie. I just run at the problem. <laughs> you know, I got to know it's just of my nature. I've always done it. I, I, without even thinking, that's that impulsive thing we were talking about earlier. When, we, yeah. when I was a kid, I tell the story a lot. We, we would sneak out of the house tonight to play manhunt. And one of my friends on the other side of the lake said he saw shadow people. And I was like, what? Because I didn't see it. So I just started running over there. I live in Florida, right? I'm running yeah. around a lake in the middle of the night with just the moonlight. Get over there. And I was disappointed. I didn't see anything, of course, because I, I never witnessed anything. But it didn't dawn on me until I was there. I was like, you know, there's gators out here. There's snakes. What the hell am I doing? Right? <laughs> like, it's the, it's, the, it's the reality of it hits you what's going on. But the point to that is, when I'm doing a documentary and I'm out there and I'm going to go to a lot of these hotspots, the network I'm building with you and other people I talk to, even the MUFON people, I'm going to go to yeah. the spots. And if something's interesting there, I'm not the, the guy, hey, let me get this, let me get a close up. I'm going to run right at it. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that's just, I have to know. It'll, I would not go to bed that night if I didn't. And uh, it might be my final act, if anything, or I might get, you know, it might be great, great footage. But either way, I'm going to the spot. Yeah, um, it's funny. I'm very much that way. I'm the guy that that my wife usually has to pull back on some cases because there's stuff out there that I'm like, I need to know what that is. It sounds crazy, but I want to see it, you know, and usually it's it's her that'll hold me back or like her cousin who's part of my team too. will be like, no, 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 man, something bad. I'm like, but I need to see what it is. I have that curiosity kill yeah. the cat mentality where it's like, I got to know. I want to go towards it. Yeah, um, and ever since in the last three years uh ever since quitting my job and pursuing my passions um it, since we're talking about energy you know i felt my i didn't realize it till we went on a case my energy is a lot stronger because before i would be a little cautious um sometimes with entities i didn't know what they were and now like we, we were in a case and literally i walked straight up to where everybody said they were seeing something and my wife yelled at me to stop because she said it was literally in front of me and I was like, I can't even feel it. Before, like, there would be a little pushback of energy on me. And now it's just like, wow, it doesn't even affect my energy field anymore. Like, I walk straight up to it and, like, I don't feel anything. And I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I say this a lot, too. You could literally create energy. You know, yeah. if you walk into a room, right, you've never been there before, and there's, there's a group of people, and they've just been hostile all night, you could sense that when you walk in that room. Oh yeah. When there's people having a great time and are laughing, you could sense that vibe too. That's, that's an intuition. Mm -hmm. Everyone has that for whatever reason, it's not spoken about widely. I don't know why, but yeah. Yeah. If, I think because they, they place it in a category of like more spiritual and they, 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 they try to detach it from being part of the human experience, which is weird because it literally is part of the human experience. Um, I say this all the time to people being an empath myself when I, and it, as I've gotten better at it, but as a young actor, when I had my first agent, I was going to auditions. Um, when people direct their energy at me, when they're looking directly at me or they're like focusing on me i can actually feel their energy and it affects me so like i would go audition for commercials or tv shows or whatever i was auditioning for and there because like certain people would be feeling certain things about me where they're looking at me it would throw me off because i feel their energy and it wasn't positive it was like they didn't like me for some reason whatever like they tell you this in acting school they say you know they might not like you because you look like their brother-in-law who they hate they might not not like you because of this that and the other thing so there's there could be a multitude of reasons why maybe a casting director somebody wouldn't like you but it was i know i've gotten a lot better at it but yeah my early days of acting man every time i went for auditions like it would throw me off because they're looking at me and i could feel how they're looking at me almost like hearing their thoughts and it would throw me off and i'm like no i need to focus on what i'm doing not what they're thinking so yeah i agree you know i, I hung out in pool halls for a lot of years and i got that a lot a lot of people like we didn't like you when we first met you but i like you now you turn out to be a really cool guy it's because yeah i look if, if you see me in life, I'm tattooed. I'm a pretty muscular guy. I walk around and I, I'm pretty obnoxious. I'm not going to deny it. I'm an obnoxious person, yeah. but it's because I have high energy, but I'm also yeah. very engaging with everybody. I don't, I don't speak down to anyone. I don't, I, I always include everyone in on a joke. I don't, I personally don't believe in trying to belittle anyone only because why? What do you approve? Yeah. There? It's like, it's exactly. like the, it's like the racism in 2021. How the hell is that still? I remember thinking as a kid, like I, racism won't be around by the time I'm older. I'm shocked to see it still is, you know, I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's mind blowing. Yeah. 
And that it comes- is no, it really is. It, a lot of the stuff you're we're seeing right now in 2021, it, it makes you think. You know, I'm I'm 37 now, and it's like wow. Like I thought certain things would we'd we'd finally move past, but you know, sadly, if if certain people in power have that mentality, or you know, it's a generational thing that's passed down from generation to generation it just continues living because nobody's actually squashing it it's like me with my family me and my brother took different routes when everything went down with my family you know we both left at the same time because all the abuse and the negativity and all that but i left with peace and love because i wanted to create that for my life so i say you know i love you guys and i need to leave and if you love me you'll understand and if you don't you don't but i wish you happiness health love and everything great in life and i'm going to try to find that for myself and my brother stole money from them. He threw away my mom's possessions. He did horrible stuff that to this day, I can't believe he 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 destroyed a lot of family history because my family had a lot of secrets. And I only found a few in my mom's apartment when she finally passed of stuff that she didn't even tell us about. And it's like so much died with my family that were secrets. And then I don't even know what my brother could have thrown away that could have given us clues to our past and, and why our family was the way it was. And I don't really dwell on it. It's just sad to think that you use that negativity and, and destroy something when I was trying to you know, build that beauty and break the break the cycle, like I said, and took care of my family at the end. I gave them the best final days of their lives that I could possibly fathom in one of the worst times in the world. <laughs> at yeah, least in all worlds. Yeah. You know, and, think in terms of this. I think with everything you're doing, I think the legacy you're going to leave behind is going to be probably more important than the legacy you're searching for from the past. Because oh, yeah. always think in terms of 100 years from now. Well, in 100 years from now, what did I do? And, and when I say, what did you do for someone? It could be so much as an heirloom like a watch that will mean the world of one individual. It could really oh, be yeah. game-changing. And and to speak to, to people and the animosities and the abuse and the racism, when we're dead and you're pure energy, there's no color. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. There's, there's no... There's no I have to believe this, and and I didn't believe this at first, but I come to research it. I think when you're on the other side, there is no real language. There's just a knowing. It's only when when they communicate with us is when they have to use language because we we have not gotten to that point yet. Oh, completely agree. Yeah, I definitely, I think that's why telepathy is talked about so much, but I think on an even deeper level than even telepathy, it's like, like you said, nonverbal. It's like a, a way of knowing. It's like that. It's like the energy is the information, essentially. Yeah, I, I hear from people. Some of them, I do a lot of off podcast uh, interviews because these are people that don't want to be put out there. Respectfully, I get it. Yeah. Um, some of the things I hear are like when they they try to channel relatives, they they say that they see images in their head, not voices, and that computes to me. You know, yeah. because then if you think about the brain, the brain has a receptor in it, and if anyone out there that like I hear people like, well, that's not true. I'll tell you what, get a science infection. Hear and you'll hear noises you otherwise would never hear. Like <laughs> that's how yes. sensitive your 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 ability to perceive things. It's pretty closed off right now. It's a working machine. But let one thing be out of whack or one thing be more hyphenated, you'll you'll pick up. But when I hear oh, those, yeah, yeah when I hear these, these stories. These people are talking about they just see images and a, and an understanding. That makes so much sense because then they're basically oh. they're taking energy and they're transmitting it to your supercomputer, your brain. And you're just seeing the images and and having the emotions and think about what an emotion is. It's a chemical response that comes from your supercomputer, you know? So, yeah, I mean, and I relate to that a lot, actually, because my sensitivity to the spiritual world, um, I rare, I've had things verbally communicate with me, but I think that was intentional, you know, was meant to be presented that way. But a majority of the time when I get something from the other side, it's, it's like a feeling that I'm able to express with language, but it's a feeling. Like, I can't tell you that somebody told me this, but the, it's, it's, I would express it as the feeling I got is this ha- is this is what happened, you know? And, and right. so I, I totally agree with that because, yeah, it's been rare that I've heard verbal stuff, although we've, we have plenty of EVPs. I've had spirits say stuff to me and my animals freaked out. Um, well, you're but, giving them a platform, right? You're doing them, you're, you're allowing them to have a platform. It makes it easier for them, right? Because you think okay. about this, they're an energy. They don't have lips, mouth, or otherwise. They they have to mm-hmm. manipulate energy to to for like even for you. They probably felt for you in a, in a couple of moments. Maybe it'd be better if we conveyed this message to them in the in, the, in words. Um, yes, I think more times more than none, and you probably would maybe concur with this. But I think in your sleep state is when they try to transmit the most information possibly for your subconscious. 
Oh, yeah. Because in a case, I, that's personally where I think deja vu comes from. I think it's just something that was, was conveyed to you in your subconscious while sleeping and or in a trance state. And that's where you, that deja vu, well, something's here, but mostly because you had a download. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, I would agree. I've had I've had two out of body experiences that that have blown my mind, and uh, both were when I was in a sleep state. Originally, it woke me up, but uh, yeah, I was in a sleep state when those things happened, and I time traveled in both of those, which was e- extremely crazy. Uh, one was the first time it ever happened. We were on a case in San Diego. Uh, my mentor, Bonnie Venton, is a clairvoyant in San Diego, California, uh, you know, helped us out in the beginning, taught us the tricks of the trade, introduced us to a lot of people, um, called us out for a case. I fell asleep in this Vic- old Victorian mansion we were investigating because I had gone three days without sleep. I was working a grape shift job. Um, I had an acting gig and like I just had super busy summer that summer. Um, and I fell asleep on this couch in the building and I woke up and I was in a different time period, but in the same home. And I experienced this little boy's death in the home. And I almost quit doing the paranormal because how intense the experience was. And again, nothing was verbally communicated. But after I got rest and I was able to calm myself down within that horrible thing that I experienced, there was a beautiful message from the seven-year-old boy. And it was that you should live your life to the fullest because I didn't get the chance to. And like, it's funny, the spiritual world has always told me that because I know I've held myself back a lot in life. And I don't get those messages anymore because I'm actually f- fulfilling that, you know, wish that everybody always talked about. But when I didn't, they would, the spiritual side would always tell me, keep going, like, keep going, live your life to the fullest, be happy. I just want you happy. So, so, you know, yeah. There yeah. You go. I mean, think, think about it. Like the amount of struggle and abuse and the bullying, everything you went through, would you, I don't know that you'd be on the path you're on right now if you didn't have that. I mean, that, it's kind of yeah. strange. Maybe you would have just ended up going to college and becoming, you know, a doctor. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's true. And I mean, even, uh, you know, having to deal with my family pretty much dying off at the beginning of this year, it was losing my mom was the hardest thing I've ever went through. And I went through a lot in my life and that still like devastated me like nothing else did. And I, it's, it's, I think part of it is because we didn't get a lot of time together towards the end. Uh, but but I thought about everything I had went through, and I said, you know what? If I didn't endure what I endured, I don't think I would have survived this. It was hard. Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, my brother left a long time ago when that whole family split happened, and he turned into just a, a very vile, vengeful, negative person who tried to break up my marriage and, and did a bunch of foul things. And I was the only one in my own mind dealing with the conflict of taking care of my abuser and like feeling, am I doing the right thing? I don't know what I'm doing. Like just nobody prepares you for this kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, I was like, you know, I survived for a reason. I'm here for a purpose and I'm going to keep living that purpose. And I talk to my mom, my grandma every day. And I say, I love you and I miss you guys. And, you know, I'm gonna make you proud and and I'm going to keep going. And, and you guys are a part of me no matter what. So whatever I achieve, you guys are going to achieve too. So, yeah, I mean, nothing, Nothing great is achieved without some form of pain, right? Whether it's going to be the pain of exercise or get built, whether it's the pain of going to college day and night to become a PhD, whether it's the pain of wanting, listen, I shot pool. You know, you're not, you're just not, you're not the chosen one. You got to put hours on a table and it's, and every shot's not the greatest shot in the world. You you have a lot of like, God damn it. You're going to go home pissed off. But when you win, you see the, the achievement. Now for you in life, you went through a lot of pain. And it, I think it speaks volumes to your experience, to the way you think, to your energy, because look at it this way. Your life went to the gym and worked out and took a lot of pain to get built. And I think, I applaud you, man. You're doing a lot. I mean, it's a lot. And so that being said, you move into the paranormal, which is tough. You know, I say this, you know, who was it? Uh, well, I'm not going to get to the name. We were discussing demons off podcast. Mm-hmm. and we were discussing what demons are and what they do. And that's, it always draws me back to like, well, we don't know what existed here before us. Yes, now, exactly. Now you hear you are on planet earth, you call home, but before you called it home, something else did in there. And just like the, the guy that the entity in the house that was his before he died, this is yeah. my house. What the hell are you doing here? And then when yeah. demons get to like, when these entities get to see how, you know, easily manipulated we are, it's a show for them. It's, it's, it's mm-hmm. entertainment. 
Oh um, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I mean, like I, some of the, the paranormal talked to me. I said, "Oh, I hear someone, does, and now it's talking to me. It's bothering me." Well, you just opened a door. It's bored. Like <laughs> it's energy, but you, you're playing that role for them. You did them the favor. You opened the doorway. You know, so yeah, a, no, hundred percent correct. <laughs> so I I always view things uh, in like you said for what like what would in my life how would I react? Well, then let's get to the next level where I am. Then how do I react there? It's going to be pretty similar. I'm a, you know, prankster, jokester, bother people. Yeah. Um, probably hang out in some hooter somewhere and harass her when there, you know, it's just, but yeah. that's at the end of the day, these are energies. So in the future, let's move forward for your future. What do you want to get done? Uh, really? Uh, I just want to be uh, doing entertainment full time. Um, I mean, and that, potentially includes the paranormal you know i still would like to have my own show one day and uh we we did a web series for about two years uh, on the paranormal we're still getting subscribers and we haven't shot in a long time obviously with covid and everything else that's been going on everybody's lives changed people left um but pretty much uh, i've always been a man that's pretty strong on what i believe and i want to do everything that i do basically that's what it boils down to if i had to choose one i'd probably choose music because for some reason that just really like feeds my soul to make music. Well, yeah, but, it sets a tone, but, right? Music could actually dictate your emotions. Yeah, no. So definitely music is high up on my list, but it's, I don't know. I, I'm a man of so much passion. I'm I'm saying it and I'm putting it in the universe because it's who I am. I'm going to do everything that I'm doing. I'm going to be a full-time actor, rapper, comedian, impressionist, DJ, all the things that I do, and paranormal investigator too. Uh, Cause that's who I am. That's who I've always been. And now I'm letting it, I'm letting me actually be that. And live that in my life. So I, I commend so you. That's, you know, that's 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 it, really. <laughs> it's a lot of the subjects of my podcast. You know, I talk to homicide cops, paranormal investigators, ufologists, health and wellness. I talked to, and there's even more subjects I'm going to be covering. Um, because a friend of mine had a discussion uh, a couple of days ago talking about the the world hunger or hunger in, in the United States alone. Yeah, and, and so. He, I asked, I asked my assistant Alexa because it Alexa knows everything, but yeah. <laughs> it's something like five to 600,000 people are starving in this country. Yeah. And then I thought, aren't there like seven plus million wild boar running around? <laughs> like, can yeah. We, and what, where's the harm in starting like this, this competitive hunting show for the boar, which would then t- end up feeding the, the, the starving. It, like these are things that blow my mind, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And again, I think as you said it earlier when we were talking about, you know, when you have a high IQ and you think, uh, I think more outside the box than most of society does, you see solutions, but people tend to believe that those aren't realistic. You know, it's like when all the stuff you see me doing, you can see you believe it. Cause I believe it. But there's plenty of people who look at you and say like, oh, that's not possible. And this, this and that, like, there's just, it, it's, it's how a lot of people's minds are set. And it's, it's the same thing with world hunger or anything else. You know, their minds are set on that. It can't be fixed. You can't fix things you believe are unfixable. You know, you have to, you have to truly change your perspective on life and believe you can achieve, you know, that's, that's what it boils down to, whether it's being successful in a career field you're passionate about, or whether it's changing the world, helping people, feeding people, whatever. I think you really have to set your mind to no, I want to do it because you can't, if you don't have that mindset. Yeah, you know, you know, before we end the show, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you stay on. I'm gonna connect you with some people you need to be connected with. All right. Yeah, no, great. That sounds fantastic. But before we close, let's uh, discuss your your websites and your channels. Anything you want out there? Yeah, definitely. You guys want to check me out? My main website is www.mcpierre.com. That's the letter M, the letter C. P I E double R E dot com. And that is my, it's my music site, but it has all my information. You can find my paranormal stuff on there too. If you like a uh, ton of info, you can contact me that way as well. If you're interested just in the paranormal, uh, you can go to www.paranormaldetectives.org. We're called the Southern California Paranormal Detectives. You search that and you'll find us as well. Uh, so that's uh, quick, the main stuff, and you'll find all my socials, all my info, all, all on those sites. So excellent. Jean-Pierre, we're going to connect again for certain. I'm definitely going to have you on again because I, I feel like there's subjects we're going to cover that uh, I think it'll it'll appeal to both of us. Definitely. Sounds great, man. I had a wonderful time with you as well, so I appreciate the time. Indeed. Uh, for the audience, good night, everybody. <laughs>